Hey, Architect Nation, Enoch Sears here. And in today's video, you'll discover the roadmap for creating a self-managed firm. One of the biggest challenges of being a small firm owner today is feeling like you're spread thin, being the model neck in the firm, having so many things to do. And this is something that the majority of firm owners struggle with continually in terms of delivering the architectural services and not getting so caught up on the short-term things that they miss out the big picture of the long-term things that need to happen in the firm. And so what we come to is this question of having a firm that revolves around a, what I call a centralized brain or a firm that operates on a distributed network. And so let's talk about this. So the first challenge that architecture firm owners face is this idea of being so focused and so overwhelmed by all the things that need to be done today, this week, and this month that they ultimately don't have time for the longer term, more important strategic initiatives. So let's have a look at what I mean by some of the short term things that a firm owner might have to work on, right? So when we talk about short term, we, th we see things like meeting deadlines, making sure the drawings are done on time making sure that the deliverables happen, making sure that change orders are issued in a timely fashion. So we have things like responding to RFIs, we have issuing change orders, responding to emails, Answering questions from staff if you have staff. So staff and team questions. Going to job meetings. Redlining drawings. and the list goes on and on and on. And so ultimately what ends up happening is that, especially in a small firm, there's so many of these things here to focus on that the longer term, more important things end up getting neglected. These would be things, so we look over here like, what are the long term important initiatives that every firm owner knows that they need to do but a lot of times they get pushed to the back burner, they don't get done, they get put off till tomorrow, and tomorrow of course is that day that never comes. So we're talking about things like strategic planning, Now I know many mid sized firms that don't even do strategic planning. They might have an annual meeting, but when we're talking about strategic planning, we're talking about looking at the lay of the land, doing a SWOT analysis, right? What are, the, what are the threats that are happening in our industry? What are some of the trends? What are some of the opportunities? What are the strengths and the weaknesses that we have as a firm? So strategic planning, working on business development and marketing. Now this is a big one. Uh, fortunately, a lot of architects they receive so many projects just from word of mouth that they never actually have to do business development. They never actually have to market. And this is a blessing, but it's also a curse. It's a blessing because you have a consistent, reliable form of projects coming into the office. A lot of times when it's a referral, these people already have a sense of knowing, liking, and trusting you, meaning that it's going to be easier to move them into a project. You're not going to have to waste so much time sending out proposals that don't turn into jobs. However, there's also a dark side to depending solely on referrals because when you're depending solely on referrals, what ultimately happens is your firm lacks, you lack control over your firm. In other words, the only thing you can do is react to the things that are happening in the market and the referrals you're getting instead of being proactive. And so what ends up happening here when we ignore this thing right here is we get into this, you get into this cycle, this kind of destructive cycle of being stuck in one particular kind of project because they continually get referred. And so this is, this is again, this is the, the, we'll call this the referral cycle. This is definitely a blessing, but it can also be a curse and a hindrance if you don't know how to break out of it, 
right? And that's where the marketing comes into it and the business development is being able to break out of that. Well, when firm owners are so focused on all the things that need to happen in the short term, ultimately these things get pushed off. What ends up happening is the firm owner then isn't able to work on the kind of products they'd like. Probably the profitability and the fees on the projects are gonna be lower because they're not necessarily bringing in higher fee products that they could be winning. The visibility and the expertise of the firm isn't getting out there as, as it could otherwise get out there. And so when we look at the other things that are important right here, when we look at marketing, business, and development, we could call this pursuing work. In terms of long-term, of course, setting a vision. Finding the gaps in the team, figuring out, do we need a new person? And if so, what do these people need to be doing? So team building. Not just getting beyond the status quo, but actually working with the team to help them improve and get better. Forming new strategic relationships or partnerships. Developing standards and processes in the firm, for example, making sure your detail library is up to date, making sure that from everything from onboarding a new team member to onboarding a new client, there's a process in place so that you're not continually reinventing the wheel. So this is sort of when you get into this idea of working on the business and not just in the business. You're creating business assets. So a long-term thing that get neglected a lot would be creating these, these business assets. In addition, another thing that gets neglected is, or uh, pushed back, is ignoring the key performance indicators, not knowing what key performance indicators that you should be looking at. And even if you know which ones you're looking at, you're not reviewing them regularly, so you don't really have your, your finger on the pulse of the firm, the pulse of what's happening, other than knowing if there's money in the bank and will you be able to make payroll, right? So this is the challenge of the small firm owner. And ultimately, if we look at why this happens and if we compare the firm owners who feel very stretched thin and they feel perhaps overwhelmed and these things cascade into their home life, perhaps they're not, they're working too much, they like to have a more balanced life, they're not able to take vacations, all of those things that are happening, those are just symptoms, not getting the projects they want to work on, not getting those projects consistently. Those things are symptoms of, so all these things over here cause those and those are all symptoms of what we're going to talk right now, which is, is the central brain versus the distributed network. Okay, so when we look at a small firm, the wonderful thing about small architecture firms is they're very nimble. They're very nimble. They can, they can pivot quickly. They don't have large levers of bureaucracy. Usually everyone needs to be pretty high caliber on the team because there's not a whole lot of room for slack. And so what we have in the small firms, when we look at them, I generally see firms kind of divided up into two camps. And most small firm owners have what I would call, so I'm just gonna draw a little brain. Let's just say this represents a brain. This is the central brain model, centralized. What this means is that, let's say this is our little brain here, that one person or, or a couple of people, usually the firm owner, has all of the expertise, knows how everything is supposed to run, can answer every single question because they probably start out as a sole practitioner. They know how to do everything. And so ultimately, this is where all of the knowledge resides, is in the centralized brain. And then as, as the firm progresses, they hire their first employee, right? So we get an employee over here. Then we hire a second employee with maybe a different skill set. We hire another employee over here. Now we hire an office manager. We need to make sure there's, you know, there's a bookkeeper. We hire another team member over here. Now we hire an, an intern. And ultimately what happens is that each of these people here, because all of the knowledge, all of the expertise, and all of the skill resides in the central brain, everyone here, when they have a question, they need to go back to the mothership or the central brain. Well, what's the problem with this? Well, of course, you can see the problem here is that this creates a bottleneck. And the, the difficult thing, again, about being a small firm owner is as firm owners, you probably got into the position you are in terms of being a firm owner because you enjoy having control. 
you enjoy things being done a certain way, you want them done absolutely flawlessly, and you may not trust people in your organization or your team, even if it's a small team, to be able to deliver the caliber that you can if you just let them run free. And so you also maybe perhaps really enjoy the design aspects and so there's a lot of things that you have your hands in. And then also, layer on top of that, also having your hands in all of the admin tasks that need to be done, making sure the numbers are up to date, making sure payroll gets done, making sure money set aside for taxes, that taxes are paid on time. I don't know exactly what you have to do in terms of, of admin, but a lot of these tasks suck the life out of the small firm owner. And ultimately what happens is it just gets to a point where it's no longer sustainable, where the firm owner literally feels like they're at a breaking point, like they can't do any more. They feel like perhaps now this, this ship that was sort of calmly going upon the water now feels like it's starting to get into some turbulence. It feels like it's gonna start breaking apart pretty soon because they have reached the maximum bandwidth that they can reach in terms of being able to produce projects. And so ultimately what can happen is Perhaps you're passing up opportunities that come along. You're having to pass up opportunities that might be good for your portfolio or strengthening relationships. Team members are maybe being left alone. Maybe they're getting dissatisfied because they feel like this is a frustrating situation to be in as a team member a lot of times. If the firm owner isn't available or if you feel like the firm owner needs to be consulted for everything. And so ultimately what ends up happening here is the firm owner ends up redlining, either kind of maintaining at a certain plateau that they can never get past, or redlining and just burning themselves out and then in the next recession having to lay people off and go into this cycle. Now the alternative to this where you know you just get totally burned out because there's all these people and things and interruptions and fires that are completely not sustainable is to move over to a distributed network model. So you know we can we can very closely kind of draw an analogy here with like technology today. So we know that 10 or 10, 10, even today, there are a lot of firms that rely solely on the server in the office. There's one main computer server. And if that server goes down, what happens to the whole entire office? There's a day of, a day of work is lost. The IT person comes in trying to fix up the computer. I mean, it's absolute disaster. However, in the last about decade or so, this idea of cloud networks has started to take hold. And what is a cloud network? Well, a cloud network is made of a bunch of individual nodes that all communicate with each other. And the beautiful thing about this framework is that if one of these nodes goes down, the system continues to function because all of these nodes, not only are they independent in what they're supposed to do, but they can also transfer information and they can communicate together. And so this over here, we'll call this, this is the distributed network. So what does it take to create a distributed network and what are the advantages of it? Well, the advantages of having a distributed network is that, again, the firm owner is no longer indispensable. This now means that the firm owner is freed up to work on whatever the firm owner wants to work on, whatever you want to work on. Whether it's bringing in new clients, maybe it's working on designs, maybe it's working on details, you have that freedom. And so what this does over here for everyone in this node, especially for the firm owner, is it gives you freedom. And what does freedom lead to? Well, freedom allows you to increase your fulfillment. And this is where architects get to a point where they say, I actually, firm owners say, I actually love being an architect again. So how do we achieve a distributed network versus being the centralized brain? Because by default, most small firms will evolve into this kind of organization here, the centralized brain framework, just because no one ever taught them how to create a distributed network in their firm. But any firm, whether it's you know one, two, three, four, five people, if it's ever gonna go past 20, uh, really if it's ever gonna go past 15 people, it needs to evolve from this over here to this over here. And also if the firm owner ever wants to have more fulfillment, more satisfaction in their job, if they ever wanna continually be challenged and feel like their firm is under control and that it's thriving and that we have the self-managed firm, then even if they don't wanna necessarily grow with tons of people, then again, it needs, to be, it needs to be transformed into a distributed network. So when we look at a distributed network, what does it take to do this? It happens through a focus on four key areas. These four key areas are number one,
management. And this would be primarily project management. So this would be fulfillment. So systems for management, number two, systems for profit. Number three, systems for leadership. And number four, systems for vision. And I need to get myself some new pins here. These ones are a little low. So systems for having a vision. And when we talk about vision, vision is not only you know what's going to happen this year. There's a 10-year vision, right? There's there's not only this idea of what the firm's going to look like, what do we want to achieve here, but this also is really what creates the culture because in under vision you have values, you have mission, which is closely tied into purpose. Okay? And when you have all four of these individual pillars working together, this is what creates an intentional culture. And culture is what attracts and keeps the right people in terms of the right clients and the right team members. Now this right here, these four things, they don't happen by accident. Ultimately, to get there, you need to have systems in place and processes for being able to hire and keep the best people and nurture them. So let's go over these systems one by one. So management is just making sure that deadlines are met, that the promises we make, we exceed those expectations. This is integral and key. No firm is going to survive long without this. Number one, management. Number two, profit systems. So this would be not only bringing in the work, making sure that we have an adequate pipeline of projects coming into the office, but also making sure that we know the profit that we're going to be making on that project. And if we're not going to be making a profit on that project, we are very intentional about that because sometimes that might be the game that we want to play. We can only do that when we're tracking the right key performance indicators. Right? So number two is profit. Number three is leadership. So this is how we actually develop our people and help them grow within the organization. So key to this idea of leadership is succeeding through other people. So we don't need to do everything ourselves. This, this is the distributed network framework over here, is that we actually succeed through the team members, through the outsourced staff, through the consultants on our team. And we do this through leadership systems, meaning that we have training involved. I was talking to Art Gensler uh, in, in an interview I did with him recently, and he was saying, and I didn't know this, but I assumed that it was true, is that Gensler, of course, the largest architecture firm in the world, has what they call Gensler University. And so they invest enormous enormous amount of time and effort making sure that they train their people so that people not only feel the opportunity to grow and expand within the organization but also they're delivering their best quality work right this is again flows into this idea of culture so that's leadership when we look at vision I, I discussed this already we talk about values mission and purpose and purpose of course is a, a great purpose is is more than just Base, so here's the thing, right? A fantastic vision and purpose, especially a purpose that gets team members excited, is about something more than the owner's lifestyle business. So if you're a firm owner and you want a lifestyle business, meaning that you just want a business that pays the bills and gives you fun and exciting products to work on, then you don't need to worry about this. You can just focus on this right here. And this video probably actually isn't even for you. As a matter of fact, working with me and my team probably isn't for you. But if you have a bigger vision, if you want to involve team members, if you want to go after something that's more meaningful and actually help other people grow, then you'll be looking at what we're talking about here in terms of this building a distributed network. Now when we talk about distributed network, there are things that need to go into this, right? We talked about vision, we talked about values, mission, purpose, we talked about these different systems. When we look at these management systems, and specifically these leadership systems, we have something that's very key this idea of job roles. So clarity about job roles is essential to be able to create the distributed network. And when we say clarity about job roles, what we ultimately mean is clarity around expectations in the job role. There's so many small firms, firms that I've worked in, firms that I know of, and it seems to be pretty common where, for instance, when the phone rings, Everyone waits for the junior person on the team to answer the phone. It's like the hot potato, right? Oh, you got to answer that phone call because I'm busy working over here. So what we have here is we have a lack of understanding or 
clear direction on the expectations of the team members because they think they're to basically produce drawings when in reality from the firm owner's view they're there to make sure that the clients get excellent service and make sure that any incoming phone calls are handled properly to make sure that the good reputation of the firm it grows and expands and any potential new projects are potentially captured. Well this is not how a team member thinks unless, unless it's clearly defined they've been trained through a proper job role. right? And so not only do we have job roles and responsibilities, but we also have the areas of the pillars that make up a practice, meaning that you're focused on and you have laid out in a sort of a blueprint format these different systems, right? Management systems, getting the projects done, profit, maintaining the revenue, making sure that there's enough money to actually make the firm survive and thrive, to reinvest back into the firm, leadership, growing the staff and the team, and lastly, having a mission, values, vision, and purpose, which ultimately goes over here to creating a culture. Now, if you create a distributed network firm, you will be above and beyond the other firm owners in your market and that you compete against. If you retain the centralized brain structure, you are at serious disadvantage and danger of going extinct because what can happen over here is a downward spiral. Because the business is not intentional, you're basically reacting to things as they happen and being, again, the centralized brain, this system over here is very, very vulnerable to recessions, to anything that can sort of tip up all these spinning plates that the firm owner is trying to spin on all those fingers and toes and legs and noses. Now, if you're a small firm owner, if you watch this far, and you're interested in moving away from a centralized brain, you want to have a distributed network, you want to have a self-managed firm that doesn't pull you in 10,000 directions, then what I'd have you consider is this is that as a firm owner, you have three basic resources to be able to achieve everything that you want to do as a business owner and as a human being in life. Number one is time, and this is something that we all have limited amount of. We all only have 168 hours per week. Number two is energy, both intellectual, emotional, and physical energy. And number three, when you combine time and energy into your business, the result is going to be money. And it's with that money that you can then reinvest in buying back yourself more energy and more time, ultimately. Now, the key here is that it is going to take time, energy, and money to be able to build the distributed network firm. So in the short term, it may not be as comfortable as what you're currently doing right now. If you want the comfortable, easy route for the short term, this over here is perhaps not going to be something you're interested in. But if you're interested in building a solid foundation today by investing time, energy, and money, your resources, to create a better tomorrow, in other words, if you're taking a longer term view, then you very much probably want to look at creating a distributed network firm. If that's the case, then I invite you to find out about a shortcut that I've created to help firm owners be able to implement this in their firm. It's called the Dream Practice Accelerator. And if you'd like to apply for a phone call with me personally to talk about it, then you can go, you can type into your web browser, businessofarchitecture.com forward slash apply. That will take you to a short questionnaire so I can get some background on your firm. And then you'll be able to book a time directly on my calendar to talk about what it might take and what it might look like for you to go from wherever you are right now to having a smooth running self-managed practice and firm. So that's it for today's video. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video. At the beginning, I promised to show you the roadmap to creating a self-managed firm. And that's what we've done right here. We've talked about this idea of the centralized brain structure versus the distributed network. We talked about the four pillars of building a distributed network type of firm, a freedom or self-managed firm that runs practically on autopilot by having management systems, profit systems, leadership systems, and of course all of this built on the foundation of a vision. We talked about the importance of having clearly defined job roles, which is just one small piece of these four pillars right here. And then we talked about what you have to invest right now as a firm owner. So sooner or later, you're gonna invest all of these things, either, either through doing this by having less time, energy, and money, or by investing this now and getting more time, energy, and money in the future because you've created a distributed network firm. So I've hoped you got a lot of value out of this video. It's been fun sharing these concepts with you. If you like this video, then I encourage you to click the like button if you're watching on YouTube. If you really like this video, then I encourage you to click the subscribe button because I release a video like this every single week practically. And if you're on the blog or if you're on YouTube, then I invite you to 
put into the comments where you're at in your firm right now. What are the struggles? Do you have a centralized brain system right now in your firm or do you have a distributed network? What are the challenges you're having about creating more of a distributed network firm and creating a firm that really frees you up as the firm owner, empowers you, and helps you create what I call the dream practice. A practice that is D, dependable, meaning it has consistency and a rhythm to it. R, it's rewarding both for clients, stakeholders, for yourself personally as the owner and for the team members. E provides an exceptional experience for stakeholders, staff, and yourself, especially for clients. A meaning it's autonomous. It can run autonomously without you there every single second. And M, it has a clear vision, a mission, and a purpose. As always, this is Enix here signing off for today and reminding you, carpe diem. Seize today.